if a, a municipality wants to start using remote care uh, and they are being concerned about the climate impact, what would you advise them to do? I would say think hard about the case uh, in, in practical terms. Uh, if it has large volumes, uh, I'm quite sure that the good digitalization is probably beneficial on the environmental front. Uh, but just throwing in digitalization on anything, uh, some rarely used services, it can be it can do no more, do more harm than than good, actually. Uh, so I will first talk about uh, results of a qualitative assessment in this topic and then give the word to Janne to talk about the climate impacts in particular. And then um, I will return with some conclusions. Um, this uh, work that I am presenting has been done together with my colleagues, Satu Pekkarinen, Riika Saurio and Lea Hennala at Lutz University. First, a few words about the background. Uh, what is this research related to? So we had a Finnish project funded by the Finnish Prime Minister's Office and coordinated by KPMG. It was a method development project first and foremost and concerned digitalization of public services. There is a need for concrete practical tools for assessing environmental impacts of digitalization, such as climate impacts. And today we will present key results briefly of our two case studies that focused on social and healthcare services. So we had two types of assessment, a quantitative impact assessment that Janne will tell about, and then our uh, qualitative impact assessment was broader covering both environmental impacts and related social and societal impacts. Uh, the two case studies, again, case number one was related to whole care services of Payet Hamed Joint Authority for Health and Wellbeing, um, their elderly care services, and especially video call and medicine dispenser services. And case number two, uh, concerned remote healthcare appointments in South Karelia social and healthcare district. I will mention these units again in a quite soon. But first about case one, uh, video call services. You can see this Bayat Hammer region on the map on the right hand side. Uh, so part of these home care services for elderly people, older people are produced as remote care services. Video call services are provided with a tablet uh, that is brought to the client's home as part of the video visit system that they have been using since 2016. A care professional contacts the client according to a specified timeline and these uh, services for the clients, they are ta tailored according to the person's needs. So it may be a question of uh, guiding and ensuring medication intake and monitoring nutrition, for instance, but it can also be about uh, an opportunity to participate in group events and interact with other clients. Medicine dispenser services, again, ensure that the clients receive their uh, regular medications in a timely manner and the care professional doesn't come uh, just to give the, the medicine. The dispensers are generally filled for one or two weeks at a time. And if there is a disturbance, such as a power outage, or the client doesn't take the medicine offered, the device makes an alarm uh, that goes to a professional. They have two technologies in use, Evondos and Axitare. And the purpose of both these types of services in case one, is to replace some of the care professionals' visits, not necessarily all. And it's also very important that the functional ability of the clients is, is such that, uh, that uh, they can use these services meaningfully. In case two, the remote healthcare appointments, uh, again, you can see the map on the right-hand side and this region of South Karelia on the map. Uh, three 
units were selected together with the case organization. First of all, dental care, and this concerned dental examinations of one-year-olds. Secondly, uh, nutritional care, and thirdly, mental health and substance abuse services for children and youth, that is family counseling and support for youth. Uh, these remote appointments are in principle available to all residents of this region, uh, but the care professionals offer the option of a remote appointment using either a video visit or Teams. Um, also, the family members can participate in these appointments if needed and if appropriate, and also professionals from several different services um, as a network. And this can be very useful if, uh, for instance, a specialist medical doctor is needed from another city. You can also see the, the shares of the uh, appointments of all contacts on this slide. We collected interview data. We interviewed 23 persons altogether uh, about a year ago from case one and case two uh, professionals from different roles. And then we also interviewed three technology suppliers uh, representatives. We had, in addition to the interview materials, we had documents provided by the case organizations as our research materials, which means uh, statistics, for instance. And I will move on to the results of the qualitative assessment. We analyzed the interviews using content analysis. <clears throat> and our <clears throat> method was based on so-called human impact assessment. I would also like to mention that these two cases that we had, they concerned different client or patient groups. They concerned different professional groups and also different service types. So this uh, offers quite a multi-dimensional picture of digitalization in elderly care and healthcare services. These qualitative results were divided into <clears throat> excuse me, environmental impacts, positive and negative. That's the main focus today. And then uh, secondly, social and societal impacts that are related to these environmental impacts. And those were also divided into positive and negative ones. Those are also very important to assess. But since we don't have much time today, I will mention them very briefly. In case one, uh, video call and medicine dispenser services, positive environmental impacts were uh, related to decrease in kilometers driven. So uh, in the case of the medicine dispenser, the decrease can be even from 60 visits by the care professionals <clears throat> per month per client to two visits. And that's for filling the dispenser but usually only part of the visits are replaced. In the case of the video calls, they can also decrease the number of home visits uh, when it's a question of some measuring and dosing visits related to care. Uh, there is also a decrease in medicine wastage, savings on care professionals, protective equipment, and um, recycling is handled, but Janne will talk more about that, I believe. And you can also see a descriptive quotation from the interviews on the right-hand side, uh, where a nurse says that it's frustrating to drive 50 minutes to give the morning, morning medicine, if that's the only aim of the visit. As to case two, uh, remote healthcare appointments, positive environmental impacts were related to the fact that this is a large geographical region. So remote appointments decrease traveling of both care professionals and clients. There are also savings on materials and waste and some decrease in paper use. Um, as to workspace, there are no actual savings on that, but there is more flexibility in the use of the workspace because an ordinary office is sufficient for a 
remote appointment. Uh, moving on to negative environmental impacts in case one, uh, they are related to energy consumption of the whole architecture, and Jan will talk more about that. Um, in the case of the medicine dispenser, also a battery is needed in addition to mains power. That's a, a detail to mention. An interesting detail with regard to medicine dispensers is also these error messages or alarms. They sometimes require a home visit and uh, they are something that could be avoided or decreased with the help of good planning and also good guidance and, and training. When uh, this medicine dispenser is brought to the client, guidance is always given but um, still better planning and by ensuring the care professional's technical expertise, um, some of this unnecessary driving related to error messages or alarms could be avoided. The number of workspaces is not affected in the case of uh, these video call and medicine dispenser services because the services have been provided at the client's home. And you can also see a descriptive quotation on the right hand side uh, about this need for good training and good support. Negative environmental impacts in case two were related to, um, uh, again, uh, these um, energy use issues. There are multiple environmental impacts and it's necessary to consider um, how these uh, things interact. So despite the decrease in driving, there may be uh, negative environmental impacts arising due to uh, data transfer, for instance. It is also good to keep in mind that different kinds of support services are necessary, IT support, for instance, and they increase negative impacts when you think about this broad uh, whole. The number of workspaces is not directly affected because some space is needed for also for these remote appointments. And very briefly, um, I will mention this important additional information concerning social and societal impacts because they are in many ways intertwined with these environmental impacts. First about the positive ones, cases one and two, uh, these uh, social and societal impacts were divided into three uh, levels, so to say. Firstly, clients and patient or patients. Secondly, employees. And thirdly, service organizations and the society. So you can see that positive impacts were related to savings, savings on service fees, for instance, saving time, money and effort spent on traveling, um, improved accuracy of timing of medication, social interaction, easier planning of time use at work, networked multi-professional collaboration, and more rational allocation of resources, as well as reduction of cancelled appointments and no shows. Moving on to negative social and societal impacts, um, here you can see that uh, these services are not necessarily suitable for everyone. Uh, they may even increase inequality of citizens. Uh, remote appointment can worsen problems or maintain them. Uh, it can be very tiring for the employees to learn these new things when the work is already very busy. There is also no decrease in total workload and it's not possible to observe the human being as a whole or the living conditions remotely. Management can also become more complex. And I will now hand over to Jan. Thank you, Helena. Good morning from the Finnish Environment Institute as well. Our role in, in the project was to actually uh, calculate the climate impacts, i.e. Uh, make the carbon footprint calculations for, for these services. This is the team that we, we had uh, for, for the project and 
we can go to the next slide. Okay, thank you. Um, digital services, uh, I wanted to talk about in, in the beginning a little bit before we go into the actual results. Uh, the climate impacts of digital services are a bit tougher to assess than, than many many of the kind of like products or things like that, because the uh, complications of, of the network uh, and, and the various parts of, of the service are divided across the globe, basically, and, and within all different organizations. So we need to make some simplifications and, and, and then uh, handle one of these parts as, as kind of an, a whole. Good example of that is is the uh, the number three here. The network it is vastly uh, complicated system of thousands of of computers basically and base stations and such. But we need to have a, a full assessment of of that network and and then use that kind of values. So we can't go into every detail. In, in calculating carbon footprints of digital services, uh, we just need to make the right kind of assumptions, like kind of limitations, and, and then we can have some practical results. What we have in all of these cases is these parts, basically. So there is uh, one, there is the equipment that are used to uh, make the service. For example, the nurses have workstations that they use for the video calls. Then there are some uh, servers, uh, some devices where the applications are, are running the services. Uh, these can be in, in your premises or somewhere in the cloud. Then there's the network I mentioned, which is always between uh, some of the parts of the digital services. And then of course, there's also the, the equipment at the service consumption side, the user's equipment, and, and their network connection as well. Next. To go into the results, uh, the video call services first, um, this is kind of the, um, the components that we were modeling for, for video call services. So you remember from Helena's discussion that there's a tablet that is used to make a video call. It's a dedicated tablet for, for this purpose. So you only use it for that. And, and then there's the service provider, which is on the other end of the call. And of course, some, some services, some outsourced service servers uh, somewhere behind the network again. Next. Then looking at the carbon footprint after the analysis of all the different components, uh, we, we can see that uh, in this case, where there is a dedicated tablet uh, to be used. Basically, we have calculated with two calls per day, 15 minute calls, and, uh, and still the footprint of making the tablet uh, for the consumer to use only, or the patient uh, to use only for this service is, is a very big part of this uh, footprint. Uh, the energy use of the tablet or energy use of, of other services in the service production side are negligible and, and the mobile data uh, being, being a big part of video calls is, is something, but not still, still not as much as the manufacturing of the equipment. We end up with the, about 90 kilos of CO2 equivalents per year. Next. And when comparing to some of the more traditional services, I mean, if you want to see whether uh, a service is, is a positive or a negative on, on total, we need to uh, compare what it uh, kind of saves. And if we are driving by car to meet the clients that we are, on the other hand, making the video calls, but instead we would be driving, then it would very fast become obvious that that you need to, that, or the video call is much better option for the environment. But on the other hand, if you are using a bicycle uh, in the city area, for example, then uh, 
the video call service is by far probably more environmentally unfriendly. So it's not always clear that the digital service is the better. Next. Going to a, perhaps a little more uh, complicated uh, service, it's the medical dispenser service. And uh, there you have a medicine robot or dispenser at the client's premises. And, and what makes it a little more complicated is that you, you have a, this special equipment there we need to analyze. And then there's also the fulfilling of the medicine robot every two weeks or so. And so you need to calculate the car for that at least. Next. So the medicine dispenser service as a whole, uh, again, most of the footprint is coming from the manufacturing of the device. Uh, there is, however, a, a considerable uh, part of the carbon footprint coming from refilling. So driving to the uh, client or the customer. And, and then if you're using something like medicine cups, uh, it can be a, a significant change again. On the other hand, the data uh, or the energy used by the medical dispenser is quite low on the whole picture. This becomes to about 30 kilos per year. And next. We have here opened a little bit the biggest part, which is the manufacturing. And, and we see that the uh, quite heavy robots, uh, actually they do get most of their footprint from the metal parts, the chassis, uh, chains within the machine or, or such uh, equipment. But the screen and the computer, even though they are tiny little computers within the uh, medicine dispenser, they do uh, come to about the same as, as the heavy metal components. So we can see here that the the burden of, of computers and electronics is considerate, considerable. Those weigh about 100 grams versus the 10 kilos of the metal parts. Next. And then for the uh, comparison, uh, so what we have in uh, medical dispensation services is about 25 to 30 kilos per year uh, as calculated for the service usage. And here you can see what, what kind of options we have. So if you are driving the car to the customer to give it medicine twice a day, it is certainly a much worse on the carbon footprint. Uh, even, even driving a bike, I mean, you need to still manufacture the bike and, and so on. It is on the climate impacts becomes a, a larger uh, footprint than, than the medical dispenser. What we can see here is that if you have a service that is used a lot, like twice a day, uh, and, and it might replace something of a travel, then it's, it's a known, uh, no brainer. It's, it's good on, on the climate benefits. Next. Then the case two, the remote healthcare appointments. Here, the difference to video calling is that uh, we are not, uh, or the service users are not, uh, they have no specific uh, tablets or, or other hardware to, to use the service and, and only this service. So we, we kind of, when you use your own phone, you just use the 10 minutes that the remote healthcare appointment takes or 30 minutes. And uh, that's calculated then, I mean, it's not only for this service that you are causing some carbon footprint. So that makes a big difference. Uh, and we can see actually uh, on the next slides that this is quite different from, from the first case of video calls. Even though these parts are, are more or less exactly the same as, as in that service. Next. So if you remember what the uh, 
Pi was look, looking at in, in the first case, it was kind of the opposite. Uh, so the service production was a very small piece of the pie, more or less the same as the service consumption, the user side in this, uh, this case. So when we don't have the uh, dedicated tablet to this, this service, uh, the user side is, is much smaller. It's basically the mobile data part only. Uh, all in all, this is more evenly uh, divided, the carbon footprint and uh, the uh, carbon footprint calculated is about the less than 50 grams per appointment. So in the first case, case we, we used per year on the services and here it's per appointment since we don't know how many appointments and typically they might be just, just one appointment. Next. Okay, so when when we have this kind of service where, where you have your own phone, basically maybe a laptop or something, but quite often a phone or a tablet nowadays uh, as, as the kind of medium to, to, do, to take the service with, then we have quite different results, uh, meaning that uh, it is typically much better to to take this kind of service than than have a have a, a physical meet but of course if you are in the city area uh, only and uh, you could actually walk to the hospital or take a bike uh, maybe even drive your electric car for for 500 meters then it's, it's uh, probably even better than than this digital service next to kind of pull those together uh, all the results uh, we can see here what are the the uh, footprints like the video call services about 90 kilos for which we remember that the dedicated tablet was a big part of uh, and and that compares to about 500 kilometers of driving uh, within the year so if if you save that much then on the environmental front, that's that's better. Uh, the medical dispenser, uh, quite a fast. Uh, I mean, you you can't drive much to, to the patient, which takes the medication twice a day to to have the same kind of footprint. And then uh, on the remote healthcare appointments, uh, again, quite a low carbon footprint. So these cases, of course, we were. Uh, selecting based on on having something that's uh, uh, feasible to see the benefits. So these are not these are kind of too good cases, perhaps. But even with these, we can see that there is still significant footprint, and uh, and it needs to be considered when when to take the digital services. Next. So uh, in short, we we also made a, a small assessment. Uh, tool. So for simple services, we, we made a website to be able to calculate uh, and assess the, the impact, the climate impact of, of services. Uh, it's a three-part tool uh, that where we, we try to have, have some guidance for, for people since this is quite new. And then there is a, a calculator for simple services. Next. Uh, this is just a picture of the calculator. Unfortunately, it's only finished at the time. Uh, basically, there are checklists to help you identify the most important impacts, uh, improvement possibilities, but then there's also this kind of online calculator we can, where you can change the values of uh, where do you have your servers or how much data does your service consume and so on. And you can directly see the values in those bars uh, to have some kind of an idea what the service, uh, what the different uh, options are causing to the footprint right away. That helps planning and, and, and making a better service. Back to you, Helena. Thank you, <clears throat> Janne. And uh, I will then uh, try to wrap up very, very quickly. So, um, 
we of course uh, can see that there are really big changes in the operating environment of social and healthcare services nowadays. Uh, so not all impacts are directly due to digitalization developments, and it's also very difficult to assess the situation before digitalization and after, because it often is a gradual process. Um, environmental impacts are not the key driver of digitalization in these services, and the, the interviews also mentioned that they are not very actively discussed. We can uh, probably see many new challenges in uh, impact assessments in the future because of wider adoption of emerging technologies such as robotics and artificial intelligence. But these developments also highlight the importance of uh, <clears throat> assessment activities in the future. And our joint research also clearly showed that the impacts of digitalization are often very multi-directional and intertwined and closely connected to people and people's ways of doing things. And here is a, an example of these intertwined and multi-directional impacts in the case of medicine dispenser services. So it really all starts from a good planning and good introduction to technology that may uh, improve or uh, make the use a lot easier more confident, more successful, uh, decrease the number of alarms and other error situations, and then uh, improve possibilities of foresight at work, functionality of the whole of work and services, and then positive uh, climate and environmental impacts. So it's really this, this beginning planning and introduction is vital, a vital stage. Very briefly about conclusions. So um, multi-perspective and multi-method impact assessments are important. Every digitalization action also causes negative climate impacts. That's <clears throat> something very important to keep in mind. And also here it's mentioned that this uh, planning and implementation of <clears throat> digitalization affect its climate and other impacts significantly. Uh, qualitative research that I was presenting, uh, that is especially important when access to numerical data is limited. Uh, it can help in gaining an understanding of the service context, systemic understanding, and uh, also show that, for instance, these social and societal impacts and climate impacts can be two sides of the same coin. We only have a policy brief in English at the moment. The long project report is in Finnish with just abstracts in Swedish and English, but uh, we also have a journal manuscript in process. So uh, stay tuned. Thank you very much.